Hello students, this is Professor Sansom and today we'll be talking about experiment eight, our acid-base titration. The setup for this experiment is a lot longer than for most of the experiments you've done in Chem 107 and will probably take you about 30 or 40 minutes. That is totally normal, so don't worry if it seems like it's taking too long. The first thing you'll want to do in the lab is put the conductivity meter in a beaker of distilled water and allow it to soak for about 20 minutes while you set up the rest of the equipment. You'll then have to go check out a 150 milliliter beaker and a stir bar from the stockroom. You can set them aside for now, but remember it's very important that you use this 150 milliliter beaker for the titration and not one of the beakers from your drawer. This is necessary to ensure the sensors are able to record the data reliably. The first step in setting up the titration apparatus is to place the right angle clamp on the ring stand. Make sure to check that the ring stand itself is tightly attached to the bench so it doesn't move or turn. Tighten it if you need to. Then place the drop counter into the clamp and tighten it until it's steady. Next you'll have to remove the plunger from the syringe body and carefully attach the two stopcocks and drop tip to the small hole at the bottom of the syringe body. The stopcocks are very delicate and break easily, so make sure that you only tighten them until they are just barely finger tight. If you break the stopcocks, unfortunately, you'll have to pay to replace them. You should also have a utility clamp, which looks like this, already attached to your ring stand. If you're missing one, look around the room to find an extra or ask your TA for help. You'll use the utility clamp to attach the assembled drop dispenser to the ring stand making sure to place it above the drop counter. Now you'll place a stir plate right in front of the ring stand and underneath the drop dispenser and counter. You'll have to rinse out the drop dispenser with distilled water. To make this easier, you can adjust the utility clamp so that the drop dispenser swings off to the side like this. We'll then place a beaker underneath the dispenser and open both stopcocks, allowing the water that you added in to drain out. Once the water is drained, you'll need to add about 10 milliliters of NaOH three separate times, making sure that you coat the walls of the syringe as it's dripping out. This will push any remaining water out that would dilute your NaOH once you're ready to start your titration. You're now ready to add the NaOH that will be used in your titration runs. Make sure that both stopcocks are closed. Then add about 40 milliliters of NaOH to the syringe. Open the bottom stopcock completely, and then use the top stopcock to adjust the flow to about one drop per second. Once you get the right rate of one drop per second, you should only use the bottom stopcock to start and stop the flow. Now you can move the drop dispenser back to the original position over the drop counter with the tip just above the hole in the drop counter. We're now ready to set up the probes and meters that will be used in your titration. At this point, you should turn on your sparkling air unit. Make sure that you see the green flashing light before you move forward. Now plug in the advanced chemistry sensor to the sparkling air. Once it's connected, push the tidal wave button that's located on top of the sensor. Now plug in the drop counter directly to the other port on the sparkling air unit. Now you'll need to plug the quick response temperature sensor, it's the one that looks sort of like a white shoelace, into the side of the advanced chemistry sensor. Don't place it directly into the sparkling air unit as you have done in earlier experiments. Next, you'll need to attach the blue pH meter. Be very careful because you have to unscrew the bottle before you can remove the pH meter and you should put the storage solution bottle in a place where it won't spill. Also, check right now to make sure that the globe, the glass globe at the end of the pH meter isn't exposed and there's still a blue plastic piece there to protect it. Now you'll rinse the pH meter with distilled water and plug it into the correct place on the advanced chemistry sensor. Finally, you'll need the conductivity meter that should be soaking. You'll also plug this into the advanced chemistry sensor. Make sure you double check that the pH meter and the conductivity meters are attached to the correct ports and they haven't been switched on accident. 
The probes and meters are all set up now and you're ready to connect the SparkLink Air unit to your computer or tablet. Open the SparkView program and then select Build from the top left corner. Then choose the first template and select the first option in the top left corner in the pop-up box. Now push Select Measurement next to the Y axis. Then press the Select Measurement button under the Vertical Axis tab. Add the Quick Response Temperature Sensor from the menu on the right. Then press Add Y axis and add the pH meter from the Advanced Chemistry Sensor menu on the right. Then press Add Y axis again and select the Conductivity Meter 10x from the menu. Finally, click the Horizontal Axis menu found above the Vertical Axis tab. Click on the button that says Time and instead select Fluid Volume found under the Drop Counter menu on the right. Now you'll need to calibrate the pH sensor. This is done by clicking on the Tools button and then pressing Calibrate Sensor. Choose the Advanced Chemistry Sensor, then pH, then Two Point Calibration, and then Next. You'll need to rinse the pH meter first with distilled water. Then you'll need to find the pH 4 buffer solution. There are only two sets of buffer solutions per lab room, so be patient as they're passed around between the lab groups. Once you have the pH 4 buffer solution, put the pH meter in the solution and stir it around for at least 30 seconds. Then click Read from the sensor where it says pH 4.000. Rinse the sensor again with distilled water and then repeat the process with the pH 7 buffer solution. Now your pH meter should be calibrated. Next, you'll need to measure out about 10 milliliters of one molar HCl using your graduated cylinder. Remember to use your skills at measuring with a graduated cylinder. You should record the volume measurement to two decimal places, for example, 9.78 milliliters. Once you've measured and recorded the volume of acid, pour it into the 150 milliliter beaker that you checked out from the stock room. Again, remember to use this 150 milliliter beaker instead of any beakers from your drawer. Then add six or eight drops of bromothymol blue indicator to the hydrochloric acid solution. Place the beaker on the stir plate underneath the drop dispenser and drop counter and place the stir bar you receive from the stock room inside the beaker. Now we're going to position and adjust all of the probes. You should place the pH and conductivity meters through the big holes at the front of the drop counter, like this. And the thermometer should be placed through the smallest hole in the middle. Now you'll need to adjust the height of the probes. You want them to be as close to the bottom of the beaker as possible without touching the stir bar. You can use the screws on the sides of the drop counter to hold the meters in place. Then add enough distilled water to cover the holes on the side of the conductivity meter. At this point, you'll want to make sure there are no bubbles in the holes on the conductivity meter. There are always bubbles. You can loosen the screw and gently shake the meter up and down or twist it while it is submerged until all the bubbles are gone. Then you can retighten the screw and hold the meter in position. If you don't get rid of the bubbles, usually the conductivity won't record. Once all of the probes are in place, turn on the stir plate and double check that the stir bar can spin freely without hitting any of the sensors. If necessary, adjust the sensors to be higher. Next, you'll want to check the position of the drop dispenser above the drop counter. You want to make sure that the tip on the drop dispenser is centered directly above the opening in the middle of the drop counter, and that it's about a centimeter above the opening. It shouldn't be too high because then the drops can splash, and if it's too low and sitting inside the drop counter, then the drops don't get counted. This is also a good time to check that the drop counter isn't dirty. There's a small green light on the top of the drop counter that will blink only as a drop passes through to be counted. If you look at your drop counter now and the light is on constantly, then the drop counter needs to be cleaned off using a Kim wipe so it can record the drops correctly. Congratulations, your setup is now complete. If you have followed along correctly up until this point, you should be able to jump to step 15 in the procedure and begin collecting data. Thanks for watching and enjoy your experiment.